everyone and welcome to our very new episode of CW Global Talks. My name is Shweta and today, as I promised, I'm going to cover a very new topic for you, which is very untouched and this is human resource. So to shed light on that, we have a very special guest in our studio and her name is Amrita Singh. She's the founder of Virtual Key and today we're going to have a detailed discussion on recruitment process. I would like to welcome Amrita Singh in our studio. Thank you for coming on board today here for CW Global Talks and uh, you being into HR uh, background. So I we, we want to know, our listeners want to know, what is the importance of human resource in any company? Um, thank you for the introduction, uh, Shweta. So human resources where human comes first, right? It's, that's the department, uh, human resources. So uh, in any organization, um, I feel uh, they need to take care of the humans, the people who are working for you. They are the yeah. backbone of your company. Yeah. Uh, if you don't take care of the backbone of your company, right. um, unfortunately, the company would not thrive. Right, agree, agree, completely agree. I mean, it is very important in every company that this fundamental should stand strong on the foundation. So moving on from this point, uh, can you tell us, uh, audience, that the idea of you getting into human resource from where it comes from, from where you, you, you thought of this thing that I want to get into this, what was your journey? Can you sh share some points, some light on this part, your, your journey with us? Sure. So uh, in 2021, the journey of my company began and we named it Virtual Key, my baby. So I come with over 15 years of industry experience. The girl, uh, you know, I would, like any other individual who started in 2021, I would say blame it to uh, global pandemic. <laughs> so uh, the global pandemic served as a turning point, uh, prompting me to leverage my accumulated expertise to support businesses. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that success lay not just in finding the right talent, mm -hmm. but also in nurturing the workplace uh, culture, and that is how uh, it all began. And since those uh, since those days, uh, or since that time, it's no looking back. That's that's wonderful. I mean, before COVID or after COVID, it is a time where everything changed for everyone. Yes, indeed. right. It, it was a time of realization. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so let's say your company, Virtual Key, this is into uh, human resource solutions, right? So if any client comes to you, they have a specific need. So how do you meet that expectation of client? How do you deliver it? Oh, okay. So let me start off with something which is very basic. When a client comes to us uh, with any kind of requirements and the first thing that we ask them, do you have a job description? What kind of talent are you looking at? Mm -hmm. uh, because for any role, uh, it is very under uh, very important or vital to understand mm -hmm. what the person would be doing, what is expected out of that person, right. what are the key factors that you are looking at in a person. Yeah. So it is very important to analyze the job. Once that's the analysis has been done, you frame the job description, right? Yeah. And only then uh, it's good to go to look out for the particular ca candidate but if you do not have a, you know a set job description or you have not done your homework um, it's gonna be uh, I would say a super difficult task to hunt for the right person mm. considering the fact that then your needs might change over the period right right, right. yes so I mean that's a very very solid point for a basic uh, requirement so if I want to understand for, for any HR company, how does different your company? How does different from another recruitment company? What is the USP? How the, how do you make a change difference? Yeah. How are we different? Good question. So what distinguishes us from the recruitment other recruitment agency is a combined factors. We have an in-house team based in Dubai, providing a dedicated uh, support for all the profiles that mm -hmm. we share uh, to the clients. Each client has an assigned client relationship manager to address queries and provides a personalized assistance throughout the process. We prioritize quality candidates that align with the job or description, as I said before, yes, <laughs> uh, increasing the likelihood of successful uh, hiring. 
Padomo, we more offer a dedicated applicant tracking system. So we have an in-house recruit, uh, recruitment CRM, which allows the clients to easily review all the candidates shared th with them over the time. Mm -hmm. So which means they don't have to run through the Excel sheets or like the other agencies does. Mm -hmm. um, it goes in a link. You just open the link o on your mobile as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're able to view all the candidates that were sent to you over the period. And you can select whichever you would like from there. Mm -hmm. So our pre uh, recruitment process is characterized by its uh, thoroughness, confidentiality, mm -hmm. and high quality candidates. Okay, that's that's interesting to know because let's say, I mean, when I hear this, so what I visualize is what is the hiring process behind the scene, right? Um, we, I have I have seen like personal experience and saying how I noticed. The industry that you apply like as a ca candidate will say you apply then you don't know what is happening behind the scene you, you sometimes as a candidate you bring yourself oh you know i don't know what is happening i am capable but but it's not happening i am trying all the platform my cv is not reaching the right person so what what is happening behind the scene do you have any advice for the candidates also? So for us, uh, what we do is uh, coming from uh, industry and I've been here for 15 years. One part of time, even I was a job seeker, right? Mm -hmm. And something that really frustrated me um, um, is uh, uh, you know, not getting the feedback on time when I have applied yes. for the jobs. I do understand, uh, you know, uh, to be very honest, when I'm on the other side now, I do understand that, uh, you know, we get loads of CVs in a day like mm -hmm. you know trust me if I don't uh, see my mail for a day it's more than thousand emails with the candidates wow. applications more than thousand this is just That's a number a it's a lot yes. so we receive so many uh, uh, you know CVs in a day so it's practically not possible to respond to each one of them but we do ensure that whoever has been uh, interviewed or has been uh, applied, whoever has first, is whoever has applied to us, yes. first thing first, we acknowledge that we have received that email. That's and in nice. case, uh, if you are shortlisted, we will be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, the CV has been shortlisted by any of our clients. Mm -hmm. Okay, we keep them posted. If, God for sake, uh, they don't get selected, they see, uh, you know, they, after attending the interview, they get rejected. Yes. So our timeline is for my team is within two, 22 to three days. Yes. Maximum is three mm -hmm. days. They have to let the candidate know it's a reject. It's a KPI for them. If I hear uh, that uh, the candidate has not been reached out for a rejection, mm -hmm. then it's, it's uh, something to do with our quality. So I take it very much personally. personally. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's great. I think it's great that any candidate out there who's who's seeking a job, who, who needs a job. Exactly. So they, they are trying all mediums, right? Maybe it's positive response or it's a negative response. But then they seek us. The, the only thing that they need is just to hear out from us. Yes, I mean it's it's okay if I'm not selected, right? Yeah. But you you come back to me and tell me that I'm not selected. Yeah, uh, it's one side of it. <laughs> but I'm sure there are a lot of things. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of scenes that comes through. Uh, you know, some uh, you know there are some candidates who are really desperate, who are okay to do any kind of jobs, even if it is an odd job. You know, mm. because they are in a desperation. Correct, you know. Correct. So, um, as an agency, and um, you know, again going back to what I have experienced in my past 15 years, and uh, I always like helping. So, so what? I don't have an opening for a particular person. I might have fellow uh, recruitment agencies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe in collaborations. I believe in helping and assisting. So, in case if I do not have, or my agency, I would say my agency doesn't have a relevant opening to your CV. Mm -hmm. uh, then what I do is I circulate it with my fellow uh, agencies. Wow. If in case you're hiring, please look at uh, this candidate. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful approach you're doing because I don't think any other agency are, I, I don't know, it, they might be doing it, but I don't know. Maybe we don't know. But what you are saying, if something like this is happening, it is, it is a great help for the candidate. So if you're listening to this, so 
I, I suggest you, you visit her website and just, just apply for a job. I'm sure if she's not able to, you know, select you for the particular position, she will definitely help your CV to circulate in her network. I think that's a brilliant job you're doing. And I'm sure there are a lot of challenges also, which you face during the recruitment process, right? Uh, it's, it's not an easy job. HR has to go through number of rounds with the candidate, right? I, I'm sure, I'm sure it happens. So there are different hidden, you know, challenges. So how do you face it or overcome that challenge? So uh, challenges have emerged. It's, it's, it's ever evolving, I would say, uh, you know. Um, so the main challenge that we always face is, as I said previously, is, is, is job description. Hmm. That's, it, I feel it's a continuous uh, challenge that we keep facing. Uh, we serve more to a startup and an SME companies. And uh, yes, things are changing, people are understanding, but it will take time. It will take time. Yeah, I would not blame anyone in this. Uh, everyone are trying their level best. Uh, you know, to run a business, it's not easy to run a business. It's not easy, yes. Yeah, so I, I do understand, and the, hence we are there, you know, to help you out, uh, to understand exactly. So this is what we do. So in case uh, if any of my clients doesn't have uh, any kind of job descriptions, we sit with them. Okay. We try to understand uh, what exactly uh, and the purpose behind the hiring a person, and what exactly you would expect the person in the, to do in the next one year. What are your goals? And likewise, once we have the required data, yeah. and uh, and uh, you know, for that particular role, we do the job description. We frame the job description, share it with the client. Is this something that you're looking at? Is this something that in future you're looking with the candidate to do? Mm -hmm. You know, or your prospective employee maybe. You know, so once that's been approved, uh, you know, then that process goes ahead. So this job description has been always been. Um, a bigger challenge for us um, it's very important and it's a very critical thing um, to be honest with her uh, a recruitment cost is more than anything for a company I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they make the right use of it <laughs> uh, a wrong hire is going to burn cost the company a lot yes I'm sure because there's a lot of process which goes behind I mean salary CTC is a different thing but time training right and investment of your senior management in training you it, it is a lot it is a it's, lot it's your time it's money everything and the, you know by the time you realize the person that you have hired is wrong you've already wasted a nearly about three to six months correct right so three considering your salary into six times plus 60 days before that you started hiring exactly. the person so there's a lot of statistics that goes in so might as well we you know try to save that much and you know have the right person who fits in your culture every person is the right person but maybe that person not the is job not. description no 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 so oh. what i mean to say is like every person is the right person you know mm. probably that person is not right for your role and for your company mm. maybe it's not well suited so there are certain com uh, you know candidates or people who come from say i come from a very structured company right I'm entering into a company which is not structured. It's all horizontal. So it's a difference, right? I'm, I may ha have a good years of experience, mm -hmm. but would I fit in? No, because I'm so used to have a structured structure, thing. Structure, yes, yes. Like, you know, yes. if you uh, directly move from uh, into an advertising industry, yes. for example, so there is a lot of uh, multitasking or overlapping of the roles, right? Correct. Probably I may not fit in. Probably I'm saying yes. it's just an example. So you know there are a lot of things goes in when you know when you are hiring a person. It's the person is going to be your asset. Exactly. Yeah. Every candidate in a company is an asset. Is an asset. I'm sure. So I mean it's a, it's a great evaluation if you put it that way. So what is the right process? How you find the right candidate? I, I really want to. Know. How do you find it? <clears throat> How do we find the right talent? So we are committed to addressing the recruitment needs of our clients' uh, company with a comprehensive and distinct, uh, distinctive approach. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we hire? So that's how, you know, so any hire starts with, I keep going back uh, to the job description because it's vital, it's very important. So once you have, we have a job description, 
-hmm. So we speak to the candidates. We try to advertise. We have a huge talent base. To be very honest, oh, sorry, a talent pool. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, we try to reach out to those candidates. Mm -hmm. At the same time, okay. we do advertise at various portals, and we have access to various portals as well. Um, so we try to do that. Of course, at in a, it's a confidential. We never release, uh, reveal the company's name for whom we are hiring. Okay. Because uh, we sign uh, to the company that we would not re uh, reveal the name until they. Go to a certain stage, mm. so it's all confidential. But given the fact that certain positions, like a C levels, obviously we need to let the, uh, them know what position we are hiring for, what company we are hiring. Mm. But otherwise, um, that's how the flow is. Once we have the job description, we uh, publish it everywhere, mm -hmm. and even in fact, we tell the uh, candidates who have applied. We only go to a next stage once the candidate is comfortable with the job description. Okay. So we do without revealing the company name. We, in a way, we tell the com candidate the entire uh, company details. Mm. So what the company is all about, where they have been based, mm. what do they do, and what they are looking in a candidate. All the information necessary information has be passed on to the candidate. Mm. Once that is done, then we start screening. We try to see the in the candidate whatever they have mentioned mm -hmm. in the CV. If that's you know, we try to pick up on the key skills that the client is looking out for. Right. If we feel uh, this is something that the client is looking out for, only then they qualify for the next stage. So that's our telephonic screening round, mm -hmm. basically. So it's a thorough uh, interview call. Maybe you can call it as uh, an, in an interview call before a client does a more detailed interview. Mm -hmm. So it goes anywhere roughly between 15 to 20 minutes with one candidate. And then once we pass on to the client, they shortlist and we have our executive summary going in along with the CV. Why we feel the mm -hmm. candidate is apt for the role. Mm -hmm. Client uh, then uh, shortlists the candidate, mm -hmm. whoever they feel is right. And then they have their own process, interview process. Once that's done, uh, say, you know, a candidate has been selected, has mm -hmm. passed through all the rounds, then comes the very crucial uh, step which some clients have started after educating psychology test or psychology assessment, yeah. psycho, uh, psychometric not test, psychometric. Mm. right? Sorry, it's not psychology, it's psychometric, psychometric test. So once that psychometric test is done, mm -hmm. then they qualify for the next. That's their background verification. Some companies don't do psychometric test, mm -hmm. then they directly go to the background verification. In the background verification, is nothing much. It's not about your personal background. It's your work employment background, how you've been. Yeah. We take and it's it's done with the due transparency. We let the candidate know. Please provide us with the two of your references, references mm -hmm. and we will be conducting your employment verification or background verifications. Once that's positive, offer letter has is rolled out and good to go. And it's a win-win situation for everyone. Yes. Yeah. But again, before of, uh, even they sign the offer letter, we as an agency again speak with the candidate mm -hmm. to ensure that he's still or she, he or she is still okay with it to proceed. Yeah, I think that is also very important because there are some time when, you know, company is taking someone on board, but I don't know, some something happens or what happens at the end, Canada is like, I, I don't want to take up the offer. I think that is also part of challenge for an it HR, is. right? So uh, we, what we do is uh, we do um, check with the uh, client for the next three months. Mm -hmm. That's a standard uh, practice in the market as an agency. We keep a tab of, with both the candidate and the client. So it's, I would love to know from both the sides what's the thing coming yes. in, yeah. positive and negative, negative. both the sides. And if there is something that can be, which is minor, can be rectified. Can be rectified, yes. Why not? Mm. Because there's a term called ghosting. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if you have to talk, we talk. We can talk for hours on this. Yes. This term ghosting is applicable for both sides, right? For candidate side also, for the company. And it is very difficult to tackle this thing. If you're a candidate, if company is ghosting you, oh my God. But if you are a company, 
if a candidate is ghosting you, then how how does that work for for the? Oh, we have we have faced this. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's. I think that's a a big time uh, problem. Uh, it's a big challenge, mm -hmm. and it's going to re remain. It's it's. Um, I I I don't foresee that getting better, but. Uh, because that's always been there because to be very honest um what happens is sometimes um the candidate is actually not looking you know that person maybe was a passive looker hmm. we head hunt yeah okay and uh, i will just see if it's okay for me i'm not like okay that. probably you want to hike in your current company yeah probably maybe to compare yeah, yeah. what's this and so that i can show the offer letter and you're ghosted yeah that can also be one of that was one of the tricks that you some heard. employees mm -hmm. or candidates do it uh, but it's very really sad to be very honest mm -hmm. because you have worked so hard mm -hmm. and then it's offer letter has been released and everything has been done and then you, you have been ghosted so that means almost you have lost about 30 35 days Yeah, I, in the entire process, it's it's a cycle, right? You you, there's process one, two, three, four. Then you get the offer letter. So it's a time based for for the company also. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's where I see it. It is very important to respect time. So it is it is applicable for both side. If you're a candidate, then it is important that you respect the time of a company. That if you're going for an interview, you respect the company their their process. If you think no, I'm going for a time pass. you can just i think speak to hr and understand before going for an interview and the same applicable for any hr any consultancy or a company that if you in a first round in a telephonic round if you think the candidate is not right usually we try we do understand we do have mm. uh, that kind of a vision we we generally make out whether the person is really genuinely interested mm -hmm. or just trying out but so you some get that vibe Yes, we do. We do because when we are interviewing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are doing it in length, right? And during that entire process, we are all we uh, have a relationship. We develop that kind of a relationship with the candidates. Mm -hmm. Usually, we do gauge that. But what happens that sometimes? Okay, we are we are humans. We're not hundred percent sure, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So yes, our calculations at time calculations at time do go wrong. You know, we miscalculate, and uh, but nothing to blame to anyone. but the only request to anyone involved uh is you know have uh you know not have actually please let the people know that you're no longer interested that's all one sentence no i'm no longer thank you for all the help yes. i'm no longer interested thank you we will not bother you i promise <laughs> yeah, i promise I did, did. <laughs> <laughs> or not only me i would say anybody in this hr industry be it an agency or from hr from the company side mm -hmm. we promise we will not bother you <laughs> but just let us know that you're not interested i mean and we trust me sometimes we literally go into tears because certain positions are so difficult very difficult positions to fill in and yeah and you know entire hard work goes in there and at the end what we come to know we have been tested So it, it both ways. It both ways. So I'm sure it is. It is not easy to take. And I mean, if 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 there is any machine to you know uh, foresee that that okay, because they are we we as an HR like you you can see we through through a uh, ATS right. So it's one way of uh, a mechanical approach. But I think now let's let's talk about uh, now. since because we are talking about this and this topic hit me right now on the ai which is a very very uh, booming topic right so this ai is also now introduced into human resource as well right so I i'm sure there are a lot of challenges a lot of good things also which you can get out of this so is it impacting your industry do we, how do you foresee uh, in terms of for for the candidate per, per se will there will be short of job in the market or how how do you see it um, what are you come to be very honest no one can replace humans mm -hmm. okay no technology can replace humans that, that's to run a technology you need humans right in a way yes yes right. correct 
the technology is going to press a button yeah but it will cut down uh, no i don't i i really don't think so really yeah, yeah. you need to use it smartly so this is a very interesting uh, point i really want to hear your thoughts on this so uh, see as i said to run any technology you need human correct make use of it try to integrate that thing mm-hmm. in your day so for example if i have to say um we write executive summaries we have our recruitment crm right mm-hmm. so everything is done we do a telephonic interviews everything is done we fit in that whatever remarks we need to fit in what does any how can ai help ai with the points that we have noted down mm-hmm. with the cv that we have it helps in creating an executive summary right use that technology mm-hmm. and ai will not understand uh what you want until you give out some kind of input prompt, to it yes, yes. yeah you need a prompt yeah right like uh, rightly said mm. we have to prompt data we need to tell ai what you want make good use of it i am a genie but you have to tell me <laughs> your wishes <laughs> yeah so so you don't have to be scared right no 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 ai no i i tell you uh, and it's and i like it i enjoy it to be very honest when i see my candidates mm-hmm. um responding to the emails mm-hmm. uh with with the help of ai i mean whatever they want to put in they put it in the ai it drops an email right. and copy paste it to us and send it to but there's no human touch what what i feel sometimes you know it's a, it's a very good technology but you should know how to use it right i a human touch i disagree you do get a human touch but I, as i said you need to know how to use that technology the right prompt the yes. right prompt so but if you know mm-hmm. how there are there are so many courses available mm-hmm. uh free resources on the youtube you know right make use of it uh you know how to lever- leverage or yeah, leverage on that point yeah i oh. mean yeah can, and candidates you, are making you a smart it. move they are they using are, they it are. I recently I came across one of the positions and I really loved the way the email was drafted by a candidate to the client because I was seated in that and he was having a conversation with mm-hmm. my client and uh, the way the things he had put it in like when he was negotiating for a salary he had his points very clear but I'm sh- uh, it was quite evident that he has taken a help but in a right way in the right way in a right way it was personalized it had mm. his touch his touch his points were very clear in that mm. and it only made to persuade my client to give him what he wanted <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you take in a way i it was a good situation for me <laughs> yes taking help is not a problem yeah. but you have to use it in a right Smartly. way for for yourself yeah i completely agree i think yes It's a good technology but cannot be replaced. It cannot, cannot be replaced. No, no. You should not feel threatened. Yes. No, no. Nobody should. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not going to affect the market in terms of, you know, cutting down on the jobs or something like that because mm-hmm. it is into all kind of sectors. It is. Um it is there. Uh, so they uh, there was a huge talk in between oh the AI is going to replace the content writers. I'm still hiring content writers. Then why should I hire? Yeah. If the, it it had affected Yes. Then why will I hire content writers? It should not have, right? Agree. Agree. So yes, because content writing also do need a human touch. It it your experience. So if I'm running a business, okay? I want a content for my to write for the website. Mm. If I put it on the AI, you know, I need this is is it. It will give me a generic thing. Yeah. It's like A B C D D. Yeah. You you figure it out. In the end, they always say, "No, you figure it out. Customize as per yeah. your liking." Yeah. Then we have to go in detail. Again, I'll put something. Yes. It will respond back. Again, I'll write. So again, you crack the code of prompt. So something yeah. like that. No. You know, I, I, you still need a content writer is very clear. I, I, I think uh, you still need a human. human. Of course. For uh, no technology, nothing can replace humans. I mean, it's a. very positive you know point you have made and it's good i mean hearing this it's it's very good and whoever listening to us i'm sure they will be happy to hear that we cannot be replaced no. by technology we rest assured <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm i'm really enjoying our conversation but it has to come to an end but before we end our session i um i want to know one thing from you that a message from you for any candidate who's looking out for a job 
do you want to tell them something some pointers which can they can incorporate in their cv or any interview skills uh, you know they can use so that they can get hired in a right way one thing that i definitely would like to tell any of my candidates is keep upgrading your knowledge hmm. okay Mom learning yes um no person in this world is has a 100% knowledge about anything we are always we are always a student we are all if you have that kind of an attitude so mm-hmm. it will definitely help you in your career that's one mm-hmm. other one is for your jobs your network they say your network is your net worth yes. right so do networking have your presence in there are so many so, uh, social platforms have your presence in there in a right way in a right channel so make good use of linkedin i would say uh have your things have your opinions so make your presence been felt on the linkedin platforms um be active uh, yeah be active mm-hmm. um your cv please ensure that it is in only two pages because and have you have the right um skills mentioned in there it's uh, because any ats or a per, we only take around 6 to 7 seconds i would say to review your cv okay we on we get to know in 6 to 7 seconds whether this cv is for okay. us or not so have to invest your time in framing or crafting a right cv having mm-hmm. the right things in place on your cv so that's very important um so yeah three things that i said knowledge that's learning your uh, networking and quality crafted cv just don't dump everything in there have the right things in place it's it's a good good point Le- yeah leave something to, for <laughs> the people to figure out and say speak it during your interview <laughs> this very well so your points are very well noted it's a lovely point you made for the candidates and i'm sure if they they are hearing this they will take some note out of it and if they have to reach you a final question for you if they have to reach you for any um support any help so how how do they reach you they can reach me on my link uh, linkedin i'm very active on linkedin uh, you can find me as amrita heblikar that's my linkedin connection or you can reach out to me uh, on my bo- mobile and um, you'll find my co- contact details on my company website that's www.virtualkey.com great that's brilliant so if you're listening to this podcast if you're watching this video and if you want to want any help for your job hunting so please do reach out to amrita she will be happy to help you thank you so much amrita come for coming today and joining us for this episode thank you so much Thank you for having me. <laughs>